This episode of the Jury Podcast is brought to you by a dead cowboy. Justin Robert Young. This here is yet another episode of the Jury Podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. You could be doing fucking anything. For real. You could be out there uh, uh, solving world hunger. The world's fucking hungry, and you could have solved it. But instead, or maybe while, you are taking in this podcast. It's a special feeling. That's a special thing, my friends, and it's why we gather here, so we can have a communal point in which we all can flower forth and make the world a better, or at the very least, not a worse place. Huh? I like, I'm a big fan of setting your expectations low as shit, and this one is low as a motherfucker. My name is Justin Robert Young. This is a podcast in which I talk about anything I could goddamn want to. And in this edition of the program, we are going to talk about fucking her right in the pussy, about hashtag well actually, and the defenses for something that I railed against uh, very, very angrily a few weeks ago. In my ever complicated and lengthy pursuit to bring... Sports to the unwashed internet masses. I'm going to explain why we are learning so many life lessons from the NFL right now and how the embattled commissioner, Roger Goodell, can make your life better if only you live by his example. Also, all right, I'm going to give you guys a a choice. All right, somebody in the chat room right now Go ahead and set up a a straw poll because I'm going to go one or the other. All right. I have here, I I have this, this new thing that is part of uh, the show now where I end things on a very serious kind of note. A serious topic tends to close the show. So I have written down here. Is it okay to acknowledge privilege in society and still believe in the bootstrapping American dream. And I will discuss that, the high-minded concept of whether or not two elements that are oftentimes at odds with each other can coexist. Or, or, right, I can have that conversation or I can review for you guys the new iPhone 6 Plus. So we are looking at either a conversation and meditation on whether or not through our own self-perception we can be both the underdogs and acknowledge that we are ahead in life, or I can review the iPhone 6 Plus. So let's go ahead and get a straw poll uh, rocking right now to see whether or not we want to have a serious discussion about privilege and the American dream, or I can review the new 6 Plus. But first, I want to talk about fucker right in the pussy. 
what? Justin, you're normally on this show talking about all sorts of crazy stuff. One might even say that I cut the figure of a, 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 a feminist. It's always talking about ladies' rights. Why would I be screaming about fucking her right in the pussy? Aha. Because it's a meme. If you're not unfamiliar, there was a, a, a viral video uh, a while ago wherein a, uh, a dude uh, ran up on, on what seemed to be a regular, uh, regular television remote. And screamed into the uh, into the microphone, "Fuck her right in the pussy." Now this had been has been proven to be a uh, fake, not real. It's not a real thing. It doesn't really exist. He set up the lady. He ran up on her. This was just a a fake video. However, it tickled many people that somebody would run up on a reporter, grab her mic. And scream, fuck her right in the pussy. Somebody in, in the chat room is saying that my, my, my big straw poll that I want you guys to create does not have a poll pot option on it. Well, if you create the fucking straw poll, you can put a poll pot option on it. For whatever reason, much like fuck her right in the pussy is a meme on the internet, within our community of chat realm, it is an invalid poll unless there is an option for poll pot. The historic murderer. Enough about that. We have, uh, so flash forward. There's a bunch of people. Let's see if we can go ahead and find a fuck her right in the pussy compilation. Now, normally when you hit this on Google, you would not be able to get uh, <laughs> something that was viewable for, uh, or at least did not include penetration. Because uh, I, I would say, normally, that it, you'd be able to view in a, in a family setting. You're probably not going to be able to, to view this in a family setting. But here, here we go. Fuck her right in the pussy. It took crews longer than anticipated to find the crack in the 64-year-old pipeline. I'm standing, I'm standing here with Fred, Fred who says it's greatly impacted. Oh, wow. I wow. don't know why there's a crazy echo. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, there's, there's this fucker right in the pussy thing. It, it's a thing. It happens. And, and, and as art imitates life, now uh, we have a lot of people who are actually doing this. They're actually running up on random people who are doing live remotes and screaming fucker right in the pussy right into the mics. Now, as you might imagine, this is a very sophomoric and juvenile type of humor. Right. It's not necessarily uh, the highest minded kind of joke in the world. Which is fairly understood when somebody who is an actual sophomore in college would find it so funny that they stand up on the table of their student union and scream, fuck her right in the pussy. This happened. College sophomore stood up on a table in a student union, screamed fucker right in the pussy. And lo, what happened afterward was nothing short of a media tempest in a teapot. Such hand-wringing. The dandies did pull out their pocket squares and waft them about as they turned their noses to the sky and said, How could this gentleman, how could he get up on a table and doth scream to his matriculating colleagues, Fuck her right in the pussy. Bears mentioning at this point that the person who did this is named Jameis Winston. He is the quarterback for the Florida State Seminoles. And what complicates this story is he was also investigated and eventually found to have not, uh, they, they did not bring charges against him, but he was investigated with a lot of very weird elements to why they didn't press charges for sexual assault. Mm. Now, remember when we talked last week about reputation? We talked about Kanye West doing something that was just kind of baseline, spinal tap, embarrassing. But because he's Kanye West, it makes national and international news 
that he told somebody who he did not know was in a wheelchair to stand up because we fill in the blanks on his actions. We know that he's an egomaniac. We know that he made this blunder. And so in the in-between, in the space between, as Dave Matthews sings to us, we fill in our own justification to make these two things one, even though they might not be. Similarly, Jameis Winston might be a rapist. Might be a rapist. Might have actually sexually assaulted somebody. He might also be so immature that he thinks standing up on a table and screaming fucker right in the pussy is really funny. That does not necessarily make him more of a rapist, nor does him being a rapist necessarily make him more prone to humor like fucker right in the pussy. But what I'm curious to talk to you guys about is whether or not you guys believe that this is funny. Or rather, can it be funny? Can screaming, fuck her right in the pussy, be funny as an abstract thing to say? Or will it always be, on some level, a, a sexist or, or a weird thing to do? It, it, I mean... Can it just be Baba Booey? Because that's what it's kind of, it acts like. The meme acts like it is just somebody calling in to disrupt major media. Which is, by the way, why I love it. I love it because I don't like broadcast television news. I think it's dumb. So the more you can see people flustered by assholes in the television news business, the happier I am. Because I, I think that's a better use for television, entertainment is, than to pretend like this is the best way to deliver news. Which is why it always annoys me whenever we get into this, oh, you know, news used to be news. This is basically every episode of, of uh, the, what is it, the network show. What, what's the goddamn show with uh, what dumb and dumber guy? The, the newsroom. There we go. Basically, the episode of the newsroom. Well, there used to be Walter Cronkite, and there used to be Dan Rather, and that's when nose was nose. Fuck that. If somebody ran up on Walter Cronkite, grabbed his big fat fucking mic, and bristled his mustache because they said so loudly, fuck her right in the pussy, it would be a better use of television than what he did with it. Television news had a very thin window of relevance, and that was an era before the internet and post newspapers when the only way to get visual content fairly fast to a mass media audience was television. But we have the internet for that now. I have this iPhone 6 Plus, which I may or may not review at the end of this episode. That's a way better way to get visual elements to explain the world around me. So I like it when bullshit goes wrong, because I, I feel that there is a, a faulty premise to television news in general, and it is brought back to, to where it belongs when assholes and cretins scream obscenities into microphones. But I'm curious to see what you guys think. Email me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Is it just harmless fun, or is it always going to be loaded in a way that will make it not fun just to laugh at. Because I kind of find it really fun to laugh at. And I kind of think that a sophomore in college should be allowed to yell uh, about sophomoric humor. It's, uh, it's, why the word's the word? Sophomoric. It's a sophomore. He should only be allowed to laugh at it after his freshman and before his junior year of high school and college. But I don't know. I don't know if, if, if maybe my my frame of reference on this is wrong. Maybe, maybe it is just I am, I am too kind of buttoned down to a certain way of looking at things. So I want to hear from you guys. We have this straw poll out. That is strawpoll.me. 
uh, 2620370. If somebody's listening all up on Alpha Geek Radio, of course, thank you to everybody uh, for doing that. Now, I am not sure if this is going to be crazy echoey, but I'm going to play this and let me know in the chat room whether or not this is insanely echoey. We're going to try to play Nesh Complex's uh, Mercury Counter stuff. This is Jive Crazy. I'll be right back. All right, we're going to try and blaze through this uh, because uh, we are we are coming up against Night of Champions. I'm going to be doing a Let's Watch or a Jury Reacts. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I, I think it's, it's probably Jury Reacts is probably better, although Let's Watch, I think, is kind of more in the spirit of what we're looking at. But I'm going to watch Night of Champions. If you like wrestling, then watch wrestling with me. I like watching wrestling. You like watching wrestling. We're going to watch a bunch of men wrestle each other. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, uh, Ryan suggests a let's wrestle. Mm, I like that. It's a let's wrestle. I got an awesome email. It says, uh, hey, Jerry, I'd like to ask you your opinion on something that's been bothering me for a while, and that is the growing hatred toward the well actually crowd, especially in the tech community and particularly among tech pundits. Since when is correcting the ignorance of another person considered a bad thing among the supposedly intellectually sophisticated? Shouldn't we embrace the well-actually crowd and become them ourselves? Don't we all benefit as a society when we uh, refuse to allow the proliferation of incorrect information? Doesn't it make us smarter, more well-informed people? It seems to me that certain people would love nothing more than to bash the well-actually crowd as pedantic nerds or even inconsiderate jerks as a way of deflecting their own ignorance on a topic and turning their own shame at being uneducated on a subject into shame of those who dare correct them. I say if you don't have the facts, you deserve a well-actually. What do you think? Agree or disagree? See or no? All right, so uh, I talked a lot about the Well Actually crowd when we, we were talking about the, the ALS ice, ice Bucket Challenge a few weeks ago. Here's where I think the line is, and this is a line for everybody. If you want to engage in a civil discourse in, in this or any society, here's what you need to do. Here is what needs to happen, Okay. Before you correct something or before you add your opinion, please do your best to suss out the actual conversation. Okay, so I know that's going to be hard. This is an inexact science, so I'm going to walk you through my best jury's guide to understanding what the fuck that means. Let's go back to the ice bucket challenge. Get a lot of people. When is it appropriate to well actually the conversation? If you were to say, I looked at the nonprofit that everybody is giving this money to, and I have found that they are, by independent watchdog groups, not good at spending their money. And I'm not saying they are, because I'm not sure. But let's say that everybody is raising money for a organization that's not good with donated money that my friends is a good well actually why because it doesn't invalidate the reason we are all talking we are all talking about the als ice bucket challenge because these videos are silly and fun and we are giving money because of them those are the key tenets fun silly videos giving money to a good cause. If you are relevantly adding to the conversation on one of those two things, you're doing a good job. However, if your conversation is 
don't do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. It's just about drawing attention to yourself, and you could do more good doing something else. Then you're not contributing to the conversation. You're looking to start a new conversation. Why? Because you are not adding to one of those two things. You are saying that these are not funny and silly videos and that giving money to a good cause. You are saying that I challenge the premise that these videos are funny and silly. Mm, see, that's not quite the same thing. The first does. It looks to seek to forward the conversation based on the initial premise. Otherwise, you are looking to start a new conversation. So whenever you get into these situations, if you don't want to be labeled a pedantic nerd and a dickhead, then do me a favor. It's why I try to do it all the time. Because I listen. I'm with you guys, man. I'm with anybody. You read this shit, and you're like, well, what the fuck? I bet you this guy's a blop, 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 and loves blip, bleep, blop. And I would love to write that. But I try my best, man. I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd and not type whatever bile just comes burgling up my innards and barfing it onto the keyboard because I don't want my point to be ignored by those people who just want to follow one train of thought. It's not to say that your point, that your point is invalid, right? It might be right. You may be crazy, but you just might be the lunatic I'm looking for. Doesn't mean people want to hear it, and it doesn't mean that it's the best way to bring that stuff up. Remember, effective communication is literally 70% of life. If you look at the problems in your life, I bet you every single one of them can be helped by getting the message from inside your brain to other person's ears better and more effectively. That, that's a whole other episode. Remind me, we're, we'll talk about that next episode. Communication is the key to life. I'm going to tell you how Roger Goodell is going to make your life better coming up right now. Big shout out to everybody who uh, was talking to me about my levels. I got a pair of headphones. So uh, now for, for these kind of things, I can hopefully, hopefully have better levels. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to learn this board and, and, and to level things appropriately. And I, I very much appreciate your feedback because... I'm not going to lie, there was a time, especially, man, you are an amateur podcaster, you're going to fuck up some audio, and you're going to look at people who are, like, yelling and screaming at you in the chat room, and you're going to think, who the fuck are these dickhead audiophiles? So you got some sharp ears. I'm sorry. I'm fucking doing the best I can here for you. That's what you're going to think. But you need to take a step back. It's a moment of personal growth for me. I have to take this help the help that is being reached out to me and, and make this better now this is a fairly daunting task on on what i'm doing here so i i do appreciate everybody having patience on it because it's not easy it ain't easy here's what is easy roger goodell roger goodell is the nfl commissioner right now he is putting on a clinic on how not to do your motherfucking job Came out this week and had a press conference and uh, 
That's what happened. He turned around in this $4,000 suit, come on, and put a wet fart right into the microphone. He didn't say anything. He said, like, the entire NFL is going to go to the domestic violence training. Yeah, we will. We're all going to go there, and I'm going to bring chips. So why is he in this position? And we can go into the, the, the specifics of, of what he did and, and what he didn't do, and maybe he saw a videotape of Ray Rice punching his girlfriend, and maybe he didn't, and maybe Ray Rice lied to him, maybe Ray Rice didn't. But... There's one key element, and here's something that we can all learn from. I can learn from, you can learn from. Roger Goodell is not good at taking care of small problems. Small problems. Here's the thing with small problems. Very often, they become big problems. But the easiest way you can tell that somebody is not good at leading is when they don't effectively and aggressively at least seek to deal with small problems if not offering solutions. That's the mark of a bad leader and a good leader. Roger Goodell is a bad leader. Roger Goodell looked at his arrest rates and decided to focus on very popular areas or areas that were on fire. So he saw that there was concussion lawsuits, so he immediately overreacted to players hitting each other in the head. He saw that there was a perception problem with athletes getting drunk and getting arrested and being wild idiots, and being in places for where they fire guns in the air, or are in titty bars, making it rain, like Pac-Man Jones. And he came down very punitively on those people. But he also knew that there was a domestic violence problem, as there has been in the NFL for many, many years. And instead of looking at player conduct as a universal thing, he only dealt with what was on fire in his world. And so he let a small problem, because again, if Ray Rice is suspended for 10 games off that video, none of this happens. None of it. We see that second video and we're like, wow, that's fucked up. I mean, he really deserved to get 10 games. And in fact, maybe he should just get the season. And boom, he gets the season and that's it. That is it. I firmly believe that And then all of a sudden, there's a month as opposed to six days between that incident and the Adrian Peterson incident. And once the Ray Rice and the Adrian Peterson incident happens back to back, now everybody looks for what the next one is. And so now you have all these things. And and now mind you, there is no epidemic, epidemic of of domestic violence and and, and beating on kids and headbutting your wife or girlfriend because they refuse sexual advances like what happened with Jonathan Dwyer in Arizona. There's no shortage of that. That shit happens all the time. But you didn't deal with it when nobody was watching. And now that everyone's watching, you really look like a dude for whom had old pajamas that had a butt flap and then somebody undid both of those bespoke buttons and your bulbous butt was bulging out. That's who you look like, Roger Goodell. Old pajamas with footies and a butt flap. Ass hanging out. My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't want none unless your metaphorical pajama clad butt is exposed. It's not as good as the original song. So what can we learn? Just go ahead. Look out in your life and say, what's a small problem right now? Um, I got to figure out where to park when I go to work. Ah, at work, there's a guy, he's kind of annoying, but it probably won't be an issue. Look at a small problem in your life and email me if you can find one. 
because I'm going to try and do it myself. Look at a small problem in your life and solve it this week. Small problem. Not a big one. Not a, uh, I got to find out who my biological father is. Not a, uh, I got to get a new job. Not a, uh, I got to become a crime fighter because uh, people killed my uh, parents after they went to see a, a, a Broadway show. None of that. Small problem. Little problem. Make a habit of solving little problems. Because I think your life is going to be way, way, way better. Also, get some pajamas with butt flaps. Is there any? Do me a favor. Join the conversation. Hashtag join the conversation. And just tweet a picture of, or tweet an Amazon link to me, of, of, of pajamas with butt flaps. I feel like I need a butt flap pajama clad situation in my life. We're 15 minutes away from Night of Champions, which means I'm going to go right into emails. Although we do have to check our, uh, we do have to check our straw poll. I'm going to do that while uh, I, I play this song, so it's not boring. But here we go. Here's another song, and then we come back with the results of the straw poll and your emails. <laughs> actually really sad that you guys aren't more shallow because <laughs> i don't have that much time and this is such a long conversation uh but but yeah no you guys have voted to to discuss uh what i what i wanted to discuss uh to acknowledge privilege and still believe in bootstrapping the american dream uh all right I'll, I'll do this as fast as i can very often you get into big heady discussions on the internet and Many times, especially when you're talking about things like gender or race or class, you have the dynamic of privilege that comes up. And that some people uh, think, uh, you know, you have one side of an argument saying that privilege does not exist. We all have our hardships. And so if you are privileged in something theoretically, let's just use this as an example. Please don't write me angry letters. If we were to use the example that the white race in America is more privileged than black people in America, that then that still does not account for the fact that you might be a poor white person and therefore economic privilege is not in your favor. And then if you're white and gay, where does that rank on the matrix if you are black and straight? And, and you know, how do we look at the fact that uh, black men were allowed to vote before white women? But let's just understand that there is a thing called privilege. That when, whenever we get born, there's a, we get a ticket. And that ticket has, or maybe it's more of a character board of, of our D&D characteristics. And some people have things it a little easier than others. For many different reasons. For race, gender, class, sexual orientation. But very often, the response to pointing out that privilege exists is, well, welcome to America. We just bootstrap it, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and make our way on. So my question to you guys is, is it okay, or can you have both? Can you believe in privilege and believe in bootstrapping the American dream? Because I do. I very much do. I'm going to let you guys in on something. I'm a, I got a big, fat, rubbery one for America. I love it. I think it's the, it's the greatest country ever. I've got a major league boner for the USA. Because if you look at a lot of countries, a lot of countries have very complicated history. We have a very, very complicated and troubled history. But it's a inspiring kind of origin and woven into the fabric of America is that idea that fuck it, let's just do it. That should be our motto. America, fuck it, let's just do it. 
Now, sometimes those ideas are better than others. Private space travel. Fuck it. Let's just do it. Rad. Slavery. Fuck it. Let's just do it. Not so good. That's not great. But we also like to tear things down in the same way we like to build things up. And that's pretty sweet. That doesn't mean that there's not, that we live in a vacuum, that every person starts from the same square zero. We all start from different places. And yes, we do all have our challenges, but when we have these conversations, it's very counterproductive, in my opinion, to say that these two things are at odds. And very often, that's what you see, or at least it's what I see. I see a lot of people trying to shoot down an argument about privilege by pointing out the American dream. And I see a lot of American dream motherfuckers trying to shoot down, uh, or sorry, a lot of privileged people saying, well, yeah, but because of privilege, there is no such thing as the American dream. Now, it's probably harder. Anytime you are not in a privileged group, it's going to be harder than the people in the privileged group. But I do believe that it's possible. And I believe that it is only if we all kind of march in that, you know what, fuck it, let's, let's champion progress, let's champion success, let's champion tearing things down and making a new version of it, revising and perfecting, that we'll be better off. But I don't know. We got a, uh, this is the longer conversation. I, I shouldn't have tried to jam it in to five seconds. Also, here we go. Uh, iPhone, iPhone uh, 6 Plus, it's fucking massive. It's really, really big. I really like it so far, though. It's pretty gigantic. Um, Ashley's yelling at me. Ashley, what? Ashley says it sucks. Adding to, uh, see, this is when to interject and when not. Don't interject if you just want to yell it sucks. That's not a productive part of the conversation. Uh, let's go ahead and put on, this is going to be our email music. Here are our emails. Benjamin writes, hey, Jerry, I tried using the Wakey app two mornings ago, and I wanted to share my experience with you. I used it two mornings in a row, and I got one call each time. First time was a woman in Italy calling me, and the second time it was a woman in London. Both conversations were around a half minute long. They called to say they were waking me up, told me where they were calling from, and wanted to know where, what time it was, where I was. They were both very friendly and cheery. Afterwards, I got out of bed and felt more energetic, while I usually feel dread for my regular alarm and hit the snooze button over and over. Overall, I sort of enjoyed it. I, can, I can't see this rep replacing my morning alarm, but it's an oddly refreshing experience and novelty. See you next time, Sunday, Benjamin from Brussels. Man, if anybody else used the Wakey app, let me know. I'm, I'm curious now if anybody else had good uh, good experience with it. Hey, TJ, first off, I like your analogy about Apollo 13 and the we are all we have. Uh, I used to, uh, I have to, I will have to use it sometime. I was so pissed off when I heard about Rebecca's account of what happened between her and Richard Dawkins at that convention so much that I started to feel ashamed to have one of his books. On the other side, I'm glad to hear that he regrets what he said, although I think he could have said more. But in the end, we are all on the same side. We are all on the same marble, and we are all we have. Thank you for your show. It's one thing I look forward to more and more uh, when I see it show up in my feed. Thank you, TJ. Thank you very much, TJ. And again, we're, we're it. We're the only pieces in this fucking Ikea box. And so either we make them fit or we fucking deal with a broken couch. John says, Jerry, I haven't finished the episode yet, but I can see this becoming a hashtag, hashtag of sorts. Uh, also, I have an example that immediately popped into my mind. This is about, uh, I'm sorry, that's how I was raised. Uh, and that is, sorry I caught off the tip of my child's genitalia. It's just how I was raised. Obviously, male circumcision falls into that idea, but female circumcision is a thing in many Middle Eastern African countries. Uh, and for some reason, America finds one of those habits much more abhorrent than the other. Join the conversation. This is a large topic to discuss, so I'm not going to get into all of it now. But I think a large reason, and you cannot just make this a men versus women thing, a large reason why we look at circumcision for men and circumcision for females 
differently is the circumstances under which they happen. It is a set part of many births in hospitals in a in, in, in the Western world. Female circumcision very often, at least as I understand it, my perception is not something that is necessarily adopted by the Western world. So that's why I think we look at these very differently, amongst other reasons. Wavalophagus writes, I was uh, born and raised in the good old Grayson, Georgia. Uh, so I very much lived and do live in a world of, quote, how I was raised, specifically with the Spanky Peterson case. First off, I was spanked growing up when I was out of line. First off, you already said first off. Uh, one of the biggest things was the fact that both my parents always showed a large amount of restraint while doing this, and then made it clear that it's because of what I had done and that they loved me and didn't love me any more or less because they were doing what they were doing, that they received no joy out of doing it. So, yeah, I would say that is acceptable. Laying any kind of hand on a child because you are angry is straight up out of line and showing no restraint is the same way. Thanks, Wafflophagus. I have, I kind of disagree, but we asked how people were raised. If you would like to write us, you can go ahead and find us on Stitcher or iTunes or some other shit. You can email me at justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram, Justin R. Young on both platforms. And of course, Join the conversation with any of the topics that we brought up during this show at diamondclub.reddit.com. Go to diamondclub.tv for any and all of your live streaming desires when it comes to me, Brian Brushwood, Tom Merritt, Veronica Belmont, and much, much more. But until next time, folks, you're walking around. Thinking about this episode, you wonder, what should I do in life? You say, should I jump into that manhole and end it all? Should I just wait under this piano so it will fall and crush me? I say, no, no, no. Think about the gravelly dulcet tones of your good friend Justin Robert Young and hear the echoing of a thousand children's choirs when I say, please don't die! If you're watching live, we're going to do the Night of Champions live stream immediately following. Don't you think you have had enough? Hopefully my levels didn't suck dick this episode. Love you guys.